Today's story is from the Singhasan Bhattisi, featuring a talking deer, a Pandu-like curse, a rishi who's desperately waiting to meet Vikramaditya, and Betal to the rescue. Welcome to Stories from India. This is a podcast that will take you on a journey through the rich mythology, folklore and history of the Indian subcontinent. I am Narad Muni, the celestial storyteller and the original Time Lord. With my ability to travel through space and time, I can bring you exciting and fascinating stories from the past the present and the future. From the epic tales of the Mahabharata and Ramayana to the folk tales of the Panchatantra and the stories of Akbar Birbal and Tanari Raman, I have a story for every occasion. The purpose of the stories is neither to pass judgment nor to indoctrinate. My goal is only to share these stories with people who may not have heard them before, and to make them more entertaining for those who have. In this episode, we are back to the Singhasan Bhattisi, by popular demand. The Singhasan Bhattisi is a series of 32 stories, all featuring the throne of King Vikram Aditya. Singhasan means throne, and Bhattisi means 32 of something. In this case, the 32 things they are referring to are stories, or storytellers, because each of the 32 stories is told by a different storyteller. So far, we have done three Singhasan Bhattisi episodes. The first was in episode 124, which had the framing narrative And then we did a couple of stories in episode 136 and episode 164. Let's do a brief recap of the framing story. After which, we'll cover another one of the 32 stories. The framing story began not with Vikramaditya, but with a different king, Raja Bhoj. Bhoj appeared on the scene several centuries after Vikramaditya had passed on. Vikramaditya was an immensely popular king. It wasn't just the Vikram and Betal stories, some of which we have covered on the show. Vikramaditya was a regular crowd pleaser. During Bhoj's time, pick up any celebrity magazine, comic book, murder mystery, romance, or even just a philosophical essay. Chances are, there would be a Vikramaditya reference in there. Vikramaditya dominated the Dewey Decimal System to such an extent that librarians dreaded questions from eager patrons asking them for any Vikramaditya references. Vikramaditya's throne was a topic that filled the shelves under the classification 001.09 in Bhoja's Royal Library. That section is meant for controversial knowledge. You know, lost continents, like the Kumari Kandam, and how aliens are supposed to have visited Earth and built every monument in sight and also lost artifacts, which included Vikramaditya's legendary throne. The throne was a gift from Indra. Indra, in case you don't know, was the king of the Devs and the ruler of Swarg, or heaven. Over the centuries, people searched for this throne with a passion that was not unlike that in the search for the Holy Grail or the lost ark 
of the covenant but the discovery of vikramaditya's throne can be attributed to neither indiana jones nor lara croft the discoverer was an ordinary farmer in bhoj's time raja bhoj observed that the farmer's behavior suddenly changed when he was in the vicinity of a particular hill so bhoj had this strange mind altering hill dug up and that's where the throne was found looking at the throne set off a bunch of new ideas in bhoj's head he had been a good king but an average one so far now by sitting on vikramaditya's throne he might inherit some of its powers and he might become a famous king himself perhaps even more famous than vikramaditya bhoj's people cleaned the throne and prepared it for him and because for some reason they couldn't manage to move the throne they just ended up building an entire palace around it even average kings were very rich in those days so spending all that taxpayer money on a new palace was not really a problem bhoj's architects and builders had done a terrific job as you might expect from people who were promised a blank check and i don't mean that the entire check was blank it was a signed blank check an unsigned blank check might not have motivated the builders to do their best anyway these builders had constructed a stairway with 32 steps leading up to the throne they chose 32 because they noticed that the throne had 32 apsara idols on its sides it was a really good thing that they chose that because it makes it easy for us to track the stories when bhoj took a step towards the throne to everyone's surprise one of the idols flew out of its spot it hovered in the air near bhoj and presented him with a challenge he could sit on the throne but only if he felt that he was worthy of it the idol told him a story and asked him a true false question bhoj needed to provide a sincere reply that was absolutely necessary the apsara idol had an ai powered lie detection module so she could be sure whether or not he was telling the truth the idol narrated a story and asked the king a question bhoj answered and the idol flew away because bhoj's answer did not match vikramaditya's action the throne looked just as pretty with 31 idols instead of 32 so the king didn't worry but then the same thing happened with the next idol and so on and so forth today we'll hear one such story the third apsara hovered near bhoj who had just put his foot on the third step hey buddy she said so you're the king who's trying to sit on vikramaditya's singhasan i'm pleased to meet you and i'm also glad that i'm not the first idol out of the throne otherwise i would have had to explain all the rules to you bhoj said that yeah it was a pleasure and all that but he had a new question about the rules What if he had skipped a couple of steps in his ascent? What would have happened then? Would he have had to listen to fewer stories? 
What if he was airlifted right onto the throne so that he reached it without setting foot on a single step? You humans, the Apsara said, you don't stop to think, do you? It's not the steps, it's the degree of intent in your mind. If you had actually decided to skip the steps and be lowered down by a helicopter or something, one of us would appear the moment you made that decision. Do you get it now? I don't know if Bhoj got it. Or maybe he just wanted to get on with the story. People had paid premium prices to view his inauguration and his ascent to the throne. All this chatter, this, was going to be boring for them if he didn't get a move on soon. With the audience's engagement in mind, at least for this step, Bhoj had had the presence of mind to hire the theater crew. They could do a real-time reenactment of the story, as the Apsara told it. Get some valley out of it. The Apsara began his story. Once upon a time, Vikramaditya went hunting, she said. Hold on, time out, just a second, Bhoj interrupted. One of the theatre crew had dashed away to get some hunting props. The impatient Apsara said something about how the show must go on, but she needn't have bothered. The cast member rushed back just then with deer antlers and a fake horse prop. All was in order. So Bhoj gave her the signal and the Apsara continued her story. So, once upon a time, King Vikramaditya went hunting. By the way, I'm just going to call him Vik because that's easier. Vik went hunting all by himself. Typically, when a king goes hunting, they have with them the best possible gear. There is usually the kind that kills a deer right away, like a bow and arrow or a spear. But there's also a second type, to capture a deer without injuring it, at least not physically. On this occasion, Vic used the second variety. He used a net to capture the deer. The deer was lucky that Vic hadn't used an arrow because it was no ordinary deer. This one could talk and it could read Sanskrit perfectly well, which meant that it could read the property of label that was attached to the net. And from that label, it knew that its captor was King Vikramaditya. The deer's panic turned to hope once it knew that it was dealing with Vic. It had often heard of Vic's wisdom, his generosity, and the mercy he had shown others. So, the deer was confident that it could appeal to Vic and be released. It cleared its throat, put on its best Bambi eyes, and said, Please, Your Highness, let me go. I'm very badly hurt. But Wick wasn't falling for it. Knock it off, dearie, he said. He got down from his horse and headed for the deer. But I'm hurt. I'm injured, very badly. The deer fake sobbed. Nonsense, said Vic. I was more wounded the last time I cut my toenails. The deer sighed 
and said, Fine. But, hey, look, I'm a talking deer. Bet you never talked to a deer before. At least hear my story, please. Vic realized that the last bit was true. He had heard other animals talk, but not a deer. All right, I'll bite. Tell me more. I'm not really a deer, the deer began. No, you definitely are. Want me to get you a mirror? Vic interrupted, helpfully. No, 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 the deer said. What I mean is I'm just trapped in the wrong body. My species was assigned human at birth, and that's how I identify. I'm even a prince who, just like you, went out hunting. I didn't take a net, though, just a bow and arrow. And then I was transformed into a deer. Not my fault, really. A Pandu curse got me. So, Vic, I know that you know all about Pandu and his curse, but some of our listeners of the story within a story within a story might not have heard it. So, let me explain. Seriously? asked Vic. We are already within a story within a story within a story, and you want to go one more level deeper? No. I'm not standing for it. I'll do a summary instead. So, you see, Pandu was a king in the Mahabharat, which is one of the great epics in Indian mythology. You'll find links to it in the show notes. Anyway, once when Pandu was out hunting, he accidentally shot a rishi, or a wise man, mistaking him for a deer. The Rishi cursed him. Pandu had a very short life after that. It's possible to claim that all of the rest of the Mahabharat would not have happened if not for this Pandu curse. All because of one bad aim. Is that what you're referring to, dear? Yes. That is exactly what the deer had been referring to. Also, the deer had a name. He was called Banvarsain. It was awkward to keep calling him by the name of his species. How would Vic like it if Banvarsain kept calling him human instead of by his name? Banvarsain went on to explain that his mistake was similar to Pandu's, but not as severe. He had done only half of what Pandu had. Panvarsain hadn't actually killed the Rishi, but he had merely disturbed his prayers. The Rishi had transformed him into a deer as a punishment. And unlike Pandu's curse, Panvarsain's punishment could be broken. All that Panvarsain needed to do was to present the noblest soul in the world before the Rishi and to hurry up and get a move on if possible because the lifespan of a deer is only four to five years. Panvarsain did get a move on. He checked with annoyed librarians who confirmed that the noble soul he was seeking was in fact Vikram Aditya. And Banvarsain was wandering about with a map looking for Vikram Aditya's kingdom when, as fate would have it, he was promptly caught in this net by Vic. If Vic didn't believe him, he could check his library card and the map. But after that, could Vic 
please go with him to the rishi so that banvarsen could turn back into the human prince that he was vik said why not and so the two of them sought out the rishi who had put the curse on banvarsen they found the rishi quickly enough he was hanging upside down from a nearby tree praying choosing to go with banvarsen might seem a little rash on vik's part the rishi was capricious enough to put a curse on a royal just because their hunting had disturbed him imagine what the rishi might do if vik's presence disturbed him but vik's risk taking paid off the rishi did not curse him in fact he hopped down cheerfully from the tree and shook vik's hand your highness it's such a pleasure to see you i'm a huge huge fan i've been cursing everyone i can hoping that one of them will bring you here to me that's fine jolly old chap but you can see that it's not a great idea to do that right all these innocent lives you're ruining but this was totally worth it the rishi said i got to meet you you're a legend vic all those stories with you and the betal say can i meet the betal too in case some of you don't know what betal means a betal is a reanimated corpse it has been loosely translated as vampire by some europeans who had an incomplete understanding of the full spectrum of creatures in indian mythology you might say that the term zombie is closer except that betals could also talk lucidly and they could fly all they did mostly was to hang down from trees like a bat anyway back to vic and his ardent fan maybe all this fanboying was a little bit annoying for someone who was as famous a celebrity as vic was so vic politely deflected the question the betal keeps his own schedule he's not like a genie you know i can't just rub a magic lamp and expect him to show up vic and the rishi chatted for a bit and finally they made a deal vic gave the rishi a chain from around his neck it was a necklace custom made from exotic seashells it had the vikramaditya stamp on it so the rishi could proudly show it off to anyone and everyone he met and in return the rishi lifted the curse on banvarsen the deer who now became banvarsen the prince the prince was grateful whoa my arms and legs are all cramped from being stuck in a deer's body by golly it's great to be back in human form banvarsen and vik thanked the rishi and departed vik had some parting advice for the rishi the next time he needed an autograph or something he should just go visit the person and ask them don't go about cursing people the rishi readily agreed as he waved them goodbye the rishi also resolved to never wash the hand that he had just shaken with vix banvarsen thanked vix again the prince explained that he was happy that he could finally go back to his kingdom it was a long walk from here by human standards as a deer he 
could have covered it in half the time. So Vic took pity on the prince and offered to drop him off at his home. Vic and Banvarsain soon took one of Vic's speedier chariots and reached Banvarsain's kingdom in no time. Banvarsain was ecstatic to be back at the gates of his home. And the guards at the gate were also ecstatic to see him, but for all the wrong reasons. A guard got out a pair of handcuffs and rushed towards Banvarsain. A few others crowded around him. Hey, I saw him first. I get to claim the reward. Banvarsain knew that Mansain, his father and the king of the land, must have been desperate to find him. But this level of enthusiasm was puzzling. And the handcuffs were puzzling too. But it soon became clear when Banvarsain saw the posters on the walls. They weren't lost posters. They were wanted posters. And not just of him, but also of his father, Mansain. I arrest you in the name of King Kapalsain, said one soldier, and he placed the cuffs on Banvarsain's hands. Long live the king, shouted another soldier. Down with Mansain, and a few other soldiers cheered. Vic couldn't just stand idly by, especially not when one of the soldiers tried to arrest Vic for being Banvarsain's accomplice and co-conspirator. That was the final straw. Vic pulled out a dirty-looking lamp and he rubbed it. Instantly, the betal appeared. Panvarsain seemed shocked that Vic hadn't been totally transparent with the Rishi about how he summoned the Betal. And the Betal's first reaction on seeing the lamp was to roll his eyes. I thought we agreed that we were going to change the way you call me. The lamp thing was fun once. Just once as a party trick. You can't do that again and again. The Betal would have gone on, but he saw now that Vic was in clear and present danger, so he jumped in to help. The Betal was a corpse, already dead. The soldier's swords had no effect on him. That is why he could resist them all. He fought all the guards by himself. Not just those at the gate, but those inside the palace too. And finally, the Betal defeated Kapalsain as well. Kapalsain was lying helpless on the floor. As Banvarsain and Vic approached, Kapalsain's soldiers finally caught on to which way the wind was blowing. A soldier stepped up bravely and said, Kapalsain, I arrest you in the name of Mansain. Down with Kapalsain, cheered another soldier. Long live Mansain. Long live Banvarsain, a few others said. The Apsara paused at this point and asked Bhoj her question. That's it. Mansain came back from hiding. Father and son were reunited, and they ruled over that kingdom. And Vic became an important trading partner after that. So tell me, Bhoj, would you have done what Vic did? Bhoj knew the answer was a hard no. There's no way Bhoj would have agreed to let the deer go. 
a talking deer he would have wanted to set up a circus tent right there to show off the deer for a hundred rupees per person maybe children 12 and under could be free but that was besides the point bhoj certainly wouldn't have gone with banwar sain looking for a rishi who seemed to be waiting for opportunities to curse any king or prince out hunting in his woods and even if bhoj had done that for some reason he wouldn't then have gone on to help banwar sain with his coup bhoj would have decided not to interfere in the internal affairs of another kingdom if bhoj had had the betal at his command he certainly wouldn't have summoned it for a trifling misunderstanding bhoj sighed as he saw that the apsara had already flown away she had evidently detected his answer before he even said it maybe he just didn't have an appetite for risk he thought like could he really have set a venomous scorpion on his brother in order to become king no way he looked at his theater crew who were exhausted from their live reenactment nice work people take 5 he told them at least the inauguration audience was engaged something was going right another opportunity lost he was 3 stories down but he still had 29 chances left to prove himself worthy of vic's legacy he'd get there he thought his stories wouldn't be called the singhasan battisi if he didn't actually hear all 32 stories that's it for this time previous singhasan battisi stories are linked on the show notes and on the site sfipodcast.com check them out we had started the singhasan battisi with raja bhoj's back story in episode 124 A couple of previous stories include episode 136 and episode 164. The throne was made by King Indra, gifted to Vikramaditya. It augmented many of the king's powers. But Vik was smart in applying logic in solving a series of problems he had faced earlier in his career. Those problems were really case studies posed to him by a betal whom he was trying to capture. In the next episode, we'll do a folk tale from Bengal. It's a story about an amazing parrot that knows everything. It knows exactly how to care for horses, where to find beautiful princesses, and how to woo them. how to restore sight to the blind and it even knows the names of 330 million gods thank you for all the comments on social media and on spotify's q and a i can't directly reply to the questions there but i'll address them here on the show first of all I'm extremely grateful to Vijayanti for all of the thoughtful comments on so many of the episodes. Thanks to Vamshidhar for suggesting an episode on Mayasur and to Hari Prasad for suggesting the episode on Dakshin Murti. I'll be working on those and hopefully have those out soon. And Hot Wheels Yedant man I'm going to attempt to put some music in the background. Given the show is ad-free, I'm looking for appropriate royalty-free music. If you have suggestions, let me know. Or who knows, maybe I'll just have to bring out the veena and compose something myself. Thank you also to Adnya and Rez and Adi for the feedback. 
It's feedback like this that keeps me motivated. If you have any other comments or suggestions, or if there are any particular stories that you'd like to hear, please do let me know by leaving a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or tweet at sfipodcast or reply to the question on Spotify Q&A. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically of new episodes. A big thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support and your feedback. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.